lately i've been watching and if you have not if you live in a cave if you live in a cave you probably have not heard uh if you're in a cave with you know over in afghanistan or something with your generator and your refrigerator plugged in how all these ufos are being now what it is is the pentagon uh, cannot say no that there isn't anything they don't call them ufos this stuff is really coming out man Well, hello everybody and welcome to the shop of Captain Dave's Sport Fishing YouTube channel. We usually talk about fishing, boats, Suzuki outboards, ugly stick fishing rods, reels. That's usually the topic, if I have that topic to talk about. It's june it's coming up on father's day weekend here and you know there is not much to talk about as far as the fishing is concerned 90 percent of the time i'm taking out little kids all summer long i mean it's been a barrage of little kids and their parents back in the last sit down here in the shop i mentioned well it was a video all about hoarding tackle and having so much rods reels lures hooks all that stuff but i also mentioned in the past video this is several videos ago that man how about this ufo stuff i mean this ufo stuff is going crazy and I believe in July, the Pentagon is supposed to make some kind of official, you know, uh, announcement about all the sightings that have been going on forever, pretty much. But it's all coming out now because Navy pilots and stuff are talking about everything. So, I actually got on my YouTube channel in that video. I actually got a comment, which I'll put sort of a, a picture of right here. That individual said, hey, you know, you should be, you know, doing a UFO channel or something. Well, maybe not a UFO channel, but, you know, you start looking into some of this stuff. And I got a book right here, The Missing Diary of Admiral E. Byrd. And what this is, it's kind of just a, uh, I don't know, it's a rewrite of a famous, and I'll see if I, you know, I'm not going to go through the whole book here. I want to just give you a quick overview. Okay, The Missing Diary of Admiral Richard E. Byrd. It's a little confusing to me, though, because I have heard of him and this guy was famous okay back in the 40s late 40s into the you know 1950s this guy was i mean he's a navy admiral pilot okay and i mean just some of the stuff that he wrote i'll get i'm just going to give you the gist of of him here's a picture of him with his faithful dog in his arctic garb okay and see how it says flight log base camp arctic february 19th 1947 as a pilot he did flight log slash diary now, I thought it was the Antarctic, and maybe this is separated into two pieces in this book. I mean, here's a picture of him in a plane that says, Bird Antarctic Expedition 2. And I don't really think it matters where he was flying, 
But I'm going to give you the gist of his diary that that's what this book is. Either North Pole, South Pole, somewhere. I thought it was the South Pole. They did an entire expedition down there where they even called it Little America or something. Took ships in, planes, bulldozers, you know, snow movers, I mean, everything. And it shows some pictures in here where they actually took the ship in like an ice crusher type thing and tied it off with stakes into the snow and ice. Well, he, I mean, this is a big time respected guy. That's the weird thing about it. The gist of the story is, is he was going on a flying expedition and I thought it was on the South Pole, but the book starts out in the North Pole, but that's kind of almost here nor there. The whole idea about him is that, and I'm like no expert, I'm just kind of learning about it and passing it on to you because this, this is kind of interesting. You know, right after World War II, I guess, he's on this flying expedition with his, with a second guy with him, and he calls him his radio man. And he is writing down a diary as he's going along. And he's flying, and I, like I said, I thought this was the South Pole, Antarctica. And he's flying along, and they're going down into some, like, mountains, and he looks and he sees what he thinks is an elephant because the snow actually changes color. So they're flying along and they're flying along and it turns out it's not from what he says now, it's almost like he's got altitude sickness. <laughs> he says it's, it looks like an elephant, but as they got closer, it's a woolly mammoth. Then they're going along and I'm going to abbreviate this big time. They're going along, the snow disappears, and they start seeing lush greenery down in between these mountains or something. And as they're flying along, all of a sudden, like these UFOs appear. Then his plane gets like stuck and it gets, you know, we'd call it a uh, Star Trek or something, you'd call it a tractor beam. He gets pulled down and they go then down into this hole. As they get down there, the plane comes to like a landing and there's a city, there's a city underground. He gets greeted by these people that he says are Nordic looking, Thin, tall, blonde. This is where things get a little weird. Because then they take him and he's in this like crystal city. And they go on a conveyance of some somehow to go somewhere. And, a, and like an elevator thing. And then they go meet the master. Just him. His radio man is left back at the plane or something. That's the weird part about it. Then he meets the master of this land in the middle of the earth. That's the whole objective to this. Here's another picture of him. I mean, this guy is the real deal, okay? There's another picture of Admiral Byrd. I mean, this guy is a military man through and through. All right. I mean, he's talking about how, you know, as they were flying along, how his gyro and his compass were acting weird and everything. And he gets drawn. He sees uh, great forests, right? And then, of course, they pull him down and then they meet by these people. And they take him to the master and the master says, we've been watching you. We saw the nuclear bombs or the atomic bombs that your people left off on Hiroshima and Nagasaki, Japan. I mean, this is crazy. They made movies about this even. Admiral Byrd going to what they called Little America down there in the Arctic. But then 
he after he like meets this guy and talks to him and the guys the master says you know i want you to take this message back to your surface people that you need to watch out and i mean there was an actual quote in here that was pretty amazing the master um says the master's eyes seem to penetrate deeply into my mind and after studying me for a few moments he replied your race has now reached a point of no return for there are those among you who would destroy your very world rather than relinquish relinquish their power as they as they know it hmm then they shuffle him back. He sees this city made of crystal material with trees and beautiful light and everything. And the people are blonde haired and they're tall and slender. And they refer to their spaceship type things as flugelrads. See, everything has a Germanish flair going on here. Nordic Germanish flair and he actually gets escorted by these flying saucer type things back out of the center of the earth where this whole civilization lives and then he's writing his diary here and he's writing down things like how could he even remember okay I mean he gets back up to flying speed and he takes off and he goes back to the base camp that the military that the navy set up down there and at the end this is all is duly recorded the president he goes back and he goes to the pentagon and everything and he says the president has been advised i am now detained for several hours 60 hours, 39 minutes to be exact. I am interviewed intently by top security forces and a medical team. It was quite an ordeal. I am placed under strict control via the national security provisions of the United States of America. And I'm ordered to remain silent in regard to all that I have learned on the behalf of the humanity. This is incredible. I am reminded that I am a military man and I must obey my orders. Final entry, December 30th, 1956. He goes back after being drawn down into the center of the earth. Okay, here's my problem. You got people who believe in flat land. You got people who believe we never landed on the moon. You got people that believe the earth is hollow because the furthest modern humans have ever drilled down into the earth was what eight miles maybe and no one really knows exactly what is in the core of the earth but this guy is an admiral in the navy and he's writing this stuff down and telling people at the Pentagon. So it's kind of amazing. You can kind of look up and you know, look at it to yourself. But with everything that's going on, okay, let me, I'll read this as like sort of the very end. Just as the, just as the long night of the Arctic ends, the brilliant sunshine of the truth shall come again. And those who are of darkness shall fall in its light for i have seen the land beyond the pole that center of the great unknown admiral bird united states navy 24 december 1956. all right well is he a little just out of his mind here because of world war ii i kind of have a feeling is this all his way 
of departing out of the Navy or something after an unbelievable career. I mean, this guy's famous because what he's seen in World War II, is he trying to stop it with a story? So it's kind of crazy. You know, he writes, I must write this diary in secrecy and obscurity. It concerns my Arctic flight of the, the 19th day of February in the year 1947. So it's just the Arctic, but I guess they went to the Antarctic too. Okay, there's a bunch. It's a very confusing story, but I had somebody say, hey man, you ought to do more on UFOs. Well, this is beyond UFOs. So if this interests you, I mean, it says here, you know, I mean, this book is a little hype, kind of a hype thing. Famous explorer enters a vast unknown world populated by superhumans. But you know what? You can't take anything out of the equation because we don't know. How do we know? that at the North Pole and the South Pole, there isn't holes. How do we know that? We don't know. I mean, you can look it up on Google Earth, <laughs> you know, but we don't know. They say we, we know more about the moon or something than we know about the deepest part of the Atlantic Ocean or the Pacific Ocean. So how do we know that this guy is wrong or just whacked out of his mind somehow? Okay, but I thought that was an interesting story. So, this is a weird book. I mean, it, it's written in literally just his diary notes. And there he is, the military man. So, something a little different. I really don't have much to report as far as the fishing is concerned. It's dealing with the little kids all summer long but tomorrow i'm actually going to do something more uh hardcore so i thought this was sort of weird me and my dad have kind of been exploring into this so thanks for watching and i'll see you on the next one